Hi there, this is Harry and welcome back to Advanced English Lessons with Harry where I try to help you to get a better understanding of the English language, helping you with every aspect of the English language, whether you're preparing for proficiency exams, job interviews, or perhaps you just want to improve your general conversational skills. We're here to help. Any problems you have, let us know. So in this advanced English lesson, we're going to look at vocabulary. We're going to look at 20 verbs that will help you with your speaking and your writing. So really here to improve your vocabulary, to broaden your vocabulary. As you know, I'm a great advocate in having one-to-one -one lessons as the best way in which you can improve your English language skills. So let me take a few minutes to tell you about Preply. Preply is an online tutor platform that have native teachers in many different languages, including Spanish, French, Portuguese, German, and of course, English. In fact, over 50 different languages. They have over 32,000 tutors that you can select from, and you can use their filter to narrow down your search so that you make sure that you pick the tutor that fits in with your requirements. Preply is available on desktop and a mobile app. It's really, really difficult to learn languages on your own. You've got nobody to correct you, nobody to listen to you, nobody to prepare homework, and it, it becomes really, really difficult and a bit of a chore. Self-guided language learning can be challenging to maintain and many language learning apps offer a one-size-fits-all approach that may not suit or be effective for everyone. In-person learning, on the other hand, can be both expensive and complicated. Preply connects you with real people, expert tutors who can offer customized guidance and support to help you achieve your language learning goals. And plus, with the convenience of online lessons, you can take classes anytime, anywhere that suits your particular schedule. With Preply's 100% satisfaction guarantee, they will also replace the first teacher that you selected for, for any reason it doesn't meet up to your requirements. Isn't it about time you tried Preply? Make sure you click on the link in the description below and get your 50% reduction for the first lesson that you purchase with Preply.com. Thanks Preply for sponsoring this lesson. So in this advanced English lesson, we're looking at verbs, 20 advanced English verbs that will expand your vocabulary and when you use them and you get to know them, they will improve your speaking and your writing skills. So I'm going to give you each of the verbs, a brief description as to what the verb means, and then a couple of examples as to how you can use them. Okay, so let's get started. As I said, there are 20 of them in total. So the first one we've got, we're going to do them in alphabetical order. The first one we've got is to abolish, okay, to abolish. And it's quite a formal verb, abolish, okay. And what abolish means is to cancel something, okay, to cancel. So usually when we talk about abolish, we're talking about laws or acts of parliament or something that have been abolished, okay. So it's quite a formal word. Um, and usually we are cancelling or abolishing something that has been in place or in situ, as they might see, say in legal documents, in situ for a long period of time. So uh, often if a law was very punitive, then in the 100 years later or 60 years later, they may abolish that particular law because it was regarded as too punitive. Okay. So for example, in 100 years or 200 years ago, they abolished slavery in America. Okay. So they abolished slavery where people couldn't use people as slaves. So they abolished slavery or indeed in many, many countries and states across America, they have abolished the death penalty. So if people commit a capital a crime, they can no longer be executed. They can be put in prison for life, of course, but they will not suffer the death penalty. So the death penalty has been abolished. So two examples, slavery was abolished many, many years ago. The death penalty in many, many countries was also abolished. Okay, so cancelled, but abolished being a much more formal word. Next verb, to allege. Okay, to allege. And when we allege something, we indicate or give the belief 
that someone is guilty of a crime before it has been proven. Okay, so we allege that somebody broke into the supermarket and stole the contents of the safe. We allege it because there's no proof as yet or it hasn't been proven in the law courts. He was or is the alleged robber and the police are collecting evidence so that they can decide whether he is guilty or not. It is alleged that he killed a man in a crime of passion. Okay, so somebody was found dead and the neighbor or friend is alleged to have killed him as a crime of passion. Okay, so the robber is alleged to have broken into the supermarket and stolen the contents of the safe and the neighbor is alleged to have killed his other neighbor in a crime of passion. Make sure that you click on the link in the description below to get your 50% reduction in the first lesson that you purchase on Preply.com. Arouse. Well, when we arouse, it means to evoke or to awaken passion, for example, in somebody or interest in somebody. So something makes you feel more passionate or something may makes you feel more interested in something to evoke. So smells can evoke certain senses, okay? So he, his odd behavior aroused the suspicions of his neighbors. His odd behavior aroused the suspicions of his neighbors. A visit to the Greek islands aroused his interest in international travel. Okay, so aroused means to evoke or awaken a passion or an interest. So whatever he was doing, his neighbor's curiosity or suspicions were aroused when he was digging holes in the garden. Perhaps he was burying his wife in the garden. Or a visit to the Greek islands aroused his interest in travel because he really enjoyed, enjoyed the warm waters and the beautiful Greek food. To boast. Well, we boast, we talk excessively about what we own or what we have or what we've got or indeed what we've achieved. So we're not just telling people I have a nice job or I have a nice house. Oh, you should see my car or you should see my house. Oh, it's got a beautiful garden. So we talk excessively. We boast about the things that we have. He boasted for weeks about the big bonus his boss gave him and everybody was really jealous. Children in the playground always boast about whose father has the best or the biggest car. Okay, so boasting, talking up something or annoying everybody else when you talk it up. In this case, in the examples, talking continuously about his big bonus that he got or the kids in the schoolyard arguing with each other and boasting as to whose father had or drove the best or the biggest car. Next, to clench. Now we can clench our fists, yeah, or we can clench our teeth, like that, okay? So when we make a fist, we clench our fist. So to make a fist with your hand as if you were going to punch somebody, or to clench your teeth tight so you can't open your mouth, okay? So when I took my young son to the dentist for the first time, he clenched his teeth so tightly we couldn't get his mouth open and the dentist couldn't examine his teeth. I'm sure you've all experienced that. And he clenched his fist in anger and was going to hit his opponent. He clenched his fist in anger and was going to hit his opponent. So to clench, clench the fist, clench, clench the teeth. He spoke through clenched teeth. Okay, good. Next is to clutch, okay, clutch. And when we clutch something, we grab it very tightly, okay? So if you want to clutch something, you hold something tight in your hand. If you're standing in a bus and it's moving around, you might clutch the support rail or the handrail so you don't fall over, okay? He clutched the young girl's hand so that she wouldn't run onto the road and get knocked over by a car. So he clutched her hand tightly. Or the fireman ran out from the burning building, clutching the dog in his arms. So he ran out from the burning building, clutching the dog 
in his arms. Okay, so to clutch, to hold on tightly. To cram. Well, we've all experienced this when we're going on holidays and we want to get the last piece of a towel or a shirt or shoes or suntan lotion into the bag. So we cram everything in very tightly. We squash it into the bag. So when you cram a bag, you pack it very tightly. Okay. So you get as much as you can, as much as possible into a very small space when there's really no room left. So he crammed as many clothes as possible into the bag so that he could bring it on the plane as hand luggage. So he didn't want to pay any extra charge to the airline company. So he crammed as much as possible into his small bag so that he could carry it on as hand luggage. He crammed three chocolates into his mouth so that no one else could get one. He crammed three chocolates into his mouth so that no one else could get one. The next uh, verb is to devise. Yeah, now just be careful here with the spelling, D-E-V-I-S-E -E in the pronunciation, to devise. And when we devise something, we come up with a plan or some something innovative. Yeah, so to devise a plan would be good, a good expression to use. He devised a clever way to increase sales in the company. He devised a clever way to increase sales in the company. Who is going to devise a plan for the launch of our new product? Who is going to put forward themselves or to volunteer to devise a plan for the launch of our new product? So to devise is to come up with a plan or to come up with something innovative. To dwell. Next one, to dwell. Now, this can have a couple of meanings, okay? So we can dwell when we're talking about living somewhere, but we can also dwell when we're thinking about something, when we're thinking for a long time, okay? So to dwell in the countryside, he likes to dwell in the countryside away from the big city, yeah? Okay, so it's quite a formal way to, to say to live, right? Or he's been dwelling on the past too long. To dwell on the past means to think about what happened in the past. Perhaps he misses the old way of his life, okay? So we can dwell in the countryside means to, to live there, to enjoy the peace and quiet, okay? Or we can dwell on the past where we think about something that happened in the past and perhaps our present life isn't so interesting or isn't so enjoyable. Okay, so to dwell on the past or to dwell in the countryside. Next, to eradicate. Now, when we say eradicate, it's a very formal word and it means to wipe out, to wipe out completely. Okay, so we often use it in, say, when we're talking about wars. Okay, so the enemy were eradicated after days of fighting to be eradicated, to be completely wiped out. The health organization in many countries work really hard to eradicate some key diseases, for example, like measles. So there's a campaign carried out in many countries to warn and make parents aware of the dangers of measles. So they carry out inoculations and vaccinations to eradicate those countries from the effects of measles. So we can eradicate an army through fighting and bombing, or we can eradicate some really serious diseases like measles or TB through some uh, program of vaccinations and inoculations to eradicate. Next, to evolve, evolve, okay? And evolve means to change gradually, okay? So it's not suddenly or, or overnight, it's to change gradually or to develop, okay? So lots of things evolve. He has evolved into a handsome young man. He has evolved into a handsome young man. The business has evolved over 20 years and is now the leading provider of those services. So the business has evolved over a period of 20 years and is now the leading provider 
of financial services or consultancy services. Next verb we have is to fumble. Fumble, it's quite informal to fumble, and it, it means to handle something in a clumsy way. So maybe you're just dropping things or breaking things, or you fumble around trying to find something that you cannot locate. So while trying to use the new mouse on his laptop, he fumbled around and made many mistakes in his emails or his presentation. Okay, so he fumbled around with the mouse trying to get work it correctly. She fumbled in her handbag trying to find her car keys. She fumbled in her handbag trying to locate her car keys. Okay, so to fumble, to handle something in a clumsy fashion or in a clumsy way. To intimidate is the next verb, to intimidate. Well, when we intimidate somebody, we usually frighten them into doing something that we want them to do, okay? To intimidate somebody. His boss always intimidated him, used to stand over him until he finished the work. So he intimidated him by standing over him, watching and waiting for him to finish the work that he had given him. Don't be intimidated by his voice. He's really a kind, gentle person. Don't be intimidated by his voice. He's really a kind, generous, or gentle person. So somebody with a big, deep voice might sound very intimidating. What are you doing? But in fact, he's really a nice guy when you get to know him. So to be intimidated by the sound of his voice or intimidated by the fact that somebody stands over your shoulder watching every move you make. Jettison, okay, this is an interesting word and it's really more associated with modes of travel like ships and airplanes, okay? So ships and airplanes, and it means to get rid of something, okay? To get rid of something is to jettison something, okay? To get rid of or to throw away, okay? But as I said, it's usually used when we're referring to planes and ships. The plane had to fly around in circles over the airport and jettison some excess fuel before it made an emergency landing. To jettison some excess fuel before it made an emergency landing. So perhaps there was a problem with the plane, it had to return to the airport, but before it could land, it had to jettison some fuel in case there was an accident. So it flew around for an hour overhead and then made its emergency landing. The cruise ship jettisons wastewater into the oceans as it's traveling from one continent to another. So the cruise ship jettisons or dumps or throws away wastewater into the oceans from showers and toilets and everything else. Okay, so it jettisons all the dirty water. Next, to ponder, to ponder. And to ponder means to think about a decision before you come up with some action or before you reach your decision. So you're thinking about a decision carefully before you reach whatever decision you want to make. And we, we refer to to ponder. He pondered his future over a long, slow glass of wine. Okay, he pondered his future over a slow or a long, slow glass of wine. So he was thinking about what he had to do or what he wanted to do or what he was going to say to his boss or perhaps he was thinking of handing in his resignation or he perhaps has already handed it in. So he was thinking about the next step in his career over a long, slow glass of wine. She pondered his proposal over the weekend. She was not sure whether he was Mr. Right. So he had proposed marriage on the Friday. So she pondered his proposal of marriage over the weekend, not knowing whether he was Mr. Right. Perhaps he was Mr. Wrong. Yeah. Okay. So she pondered his proposal. To prompt somebody. To prompt is the next verb. And when we prompt somebody, we give them a clue or a little bit of a push or a little gentle reminder of something. Okay, so he prompted me that the meeting was going to take place in an hour's time, just in case I had forgotten. So he prompted me, he reminded me that the meeting was going to take place in an hour's time in case I had forgotten, just because I forgot the last one. Okay, I struggled to find the correct answer but the teacher was able to prompt me and I worked it out in the end. So 
The, I was struggling to find the answer to the mathematics problem, but the teacher prompted me, uh, I was able to prompt me, and I worked out the answer in the end. So to prompt, to give a gentle little push or a little reminder or a little bit of help, okay? So if you were going to a pub quiz, for example, the quiz master, whoever set the questions, might make an announcement that there was no prompts to be given to anyone when he was asking the questions, that there was no prompts to be given to anybody while he was asking the questions. Okay, so the next verb is to repeal, repeal. Now, earlier on we spoke about laws that might be abolished, so we can also repeal certain laws, okay? And it always refers to legal matters. When a law is no longer necessary or no longer required, it is often repealed or indeed revoked is another word we can use. So the law relating to the public, allowing them to graze their cattle on the city square was repealed as it was outdated. Nobody keeps uh, cattle in the city anymore. So it was repealed because it was out of date. The government have been approached by the citizens' representatives to repeal many outdated laws relating to women. Okay, so the government has been approached by citizens groups or representatives to repeal outdated laws relating to women and females okay so this again about laws and outdated activities so we either repeal the law or we revoke them and in fact revoke is our next verb so revoke and repeal are synonyms of each other but there are other things we can revoke for example we can revoke a will. So if somebody writes his will and then a month or two months or six months before he dies, he revokes his previous will and makes a new will. Okay, so to revoke means to annul, cancel, or to take back. So in this case, he revoked his previous will in favor of a new will. Or if you continuously break the speeding limits and you're continuously getting fined, a judge might revoke your driving license. Okay, so if your driving license is revoked, it means it's cancelled and you have to take the test again. So if you repeatedly break the rules or the, or the speeding laws, then you might run the risk of getting your driving, driving license revoked, cancelled, okay, or annulled. Next verb, to quibble. To quibble is an unusual word, quibble, okay? And it's quite informal, and it means to argue or disagree about very trivial, very small matters. My only quibble was the distance that I had to walk to the restaurant. So I went to this wonderful hotel for a holiday, and it was absolutely beautiful. The rooms were fantastic, but my only quibble was the fact of the distance I had to walk to each of the restaurants, okay? So not a very important uh, complaint, okay? And uh, the other example would be, they are always quibbling about the smallest detail on the bill. So when they go out for a meal together, they're always quibbling over the last two cents or 10 cents or 20 cents, and it doesn't really matter at all, but they're trivial matters, but they're always quibbling or arguing about them to quibble. And then to startle, to startle means to surprise someone unexpectedly, to startle. When the bird flew and hit my window, I was startled as I was sleeping in the chair. So I was having a quick uh, 40 winks in the chair and I heard a bang against the window. So I was startled by the noise because a bird had hit the window while I was sleeping. Okay. Or when I returned home early from work, I startled a burglar trying to break into my house. So I came home early and there was somebody trying to get in through the front or the back window and I startled him, I surprised him and he ran off and I called the police trying to, to catch him, okay? So to startle somebody. Okay, so there you have 20, yeah, 20 verbs. They're interesting verbs. Some of them a little bit unusual, some of them more formal. So these are going to help you to improve your vocabulary. Try and pick some of them out, try to practice them, try to put them into your own sentences. And as always, if you need some extra help, some extra examples or additional information, just come back to me. And if you 
do like this particular lesson, then please like the video. And if you can subscribe to the channel because it does, it really, really helps. Okay, so hopefully you can practice those particular verbs and get ready for the next lesson. So this is Harry saying thank you for watching this lesson and joining me and I'll see you the next time.